The only frustrating part about today is that they're all grouped up in these small pods, but they're all like 100 to 200 yards away from each other. Like I can see fish coming up over there, there's fish over there, and there were fish over here, but by the time we get here, the fish will be where we were. So they just, they move around super fast. It's hard to actually stay on fish. Go ahead and play some footage of somebody actually catching fish while we're out here looking for them. Step number one to catching a striper, waking up super early. The routine's pretty simple. Wake up, open up your eyes and figure out where you're at again and make yourself a cup of coffee and you gotta feed the dog and, and uh, load everything up and hit the road. Stripers, just the way that they operate, they like to feed in darkness. So uh, I would tell you that most of the time when we're catching them, it's really early in the morning. So you gotta be there really early. Um, my dad ingrained in me when I was really young to always get to the ramp 30 minutes before sunrise just so you can beat most other people that are going to be there. Um, and that transfers over really well to stripers because they feed in low light conditions. So that's when you've got the best opportunity to catch them. Come here. We pray for the cloudy days because it lets you get there a little bit later. Um, maybe if you had a long night the night before. This time of the year, it's kind of a special time of the year because you start to get these like small groups of shad and they'll get on points and stuff. So you can absolutely have success just fishing points. But I mean, looking around here, there's what? Like, you know, just in sight, there's 11, 12 points. That's your whole day right there. And you may never get around any shad. So really doesn't make any sense stopping until you find what you're looking for. So it's a, it's a lot driving around. That's just how it goes. You found any shad or anything? I got nothing. I, I don't have a clue. We have a pretty small community of fly anglers that are specifically chasing stripers. My buddy Bruce Dark, we like to meet up and, and talk about how we haven't caught fish or how we uh, think that the fish are all just gone some days. And some days we knock them dead and we're, we're just right on top of them. But having that small community of people that can kind of help you locate some fish is absolutely essential. This little thread fin pattern that I came up with, I call it Pop Shad. It's gonna be an umqua pattern. It mimics the shad that we're chasing around for really most of the year. This is the typical size of our thread fin shad, and they always have to have a little bit of pink on them. I'm pretty stoked about it. It seems to do really well for us every year. The setup that I use, I use anywhere from a seven to nine weight. Is he gonna be in this or is, no, no, okay, this, he's this, all good. In the shot. Get out of the shot. You're in the shot. Uh, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> I like having a good strong reel that has a fully sealed drag. Uh, they're generally a little bit stronger drags. That way, those fish that try to put you in the trees immediately, you can actually stop them quickly because uh, that becomes super important with some fish. Yeah, that was one right there. Having patience, I'd say it's the most important part of the whole deal. The fish act like ghosts sometimes. They really, they never stop moving. They don't act like largemouth or crappie in the aspect of they'll hold tight to cover and just kind of sit there. Stripers, they group up in anywhere from groups of two fish to 300 fish, uh, and they never stop moving. 
a good day for us often is just catching one fish. That one fish can make or break our day. It gets unbelievably frustrating. Uh, there's some days that I go out there that I really think the fish grow legs and just walk up on the shore and leave. And then I think they just come back in. Let's try that. But if you know that you're in the right water temperature and around the shad, then you just kind of have to keep the faith that you're gonna find those fish. Come on. There's a bunch of them right here. So, yeah. There's a big school of fish right under the boat. Yeah, they're everywhere out here now. We just gotta get one that wants to cooperate. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's a big one too, dude. I've never seen one eat on top like that. That was amazing. That's like a 20 pounder. Let's see if I can get him out of there. Now comes the important part, keeping them out of the trees. Oh. Yeah, it's a good one. Boy's right on top of the water too. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a 20 pounder. Woo! Dude, I've never, never seen one eat that close to the top. That close to the boat either. That's a good fish. That was insane. That's a big fish. Yeah. Uh, how's about that one? What do you think, Wednesday? When that fish hit, it, it was a complete roller coaster of emotions. It was an unbelievable fish and just an unbelievable experience.